Eager Hospitality Yosef Akiva left Smolevich in the middle of the month of Av and wandered from town to town and through townlets and villages until he finally was in sight of his destination, the townlet of Krushta. It was a few days before Slichus when he stopped to spend the night at the house of a villager in the vicinity of Krushta. While there, he heard that in the nearby town a public fast had been arranged for the following day and the Rav of the town was going to preach in the afternoon. Yosef Akiva, together with his host, went into the town the next day and came to the Beis HaMedrash in time to hear the Rav's sermon explaining the importance of Slichas, followed by Mincha and Mairav. To Yosef Akiva's great astonishment, he saw the Rav coming towards him with outstretched hand, greeting him like an old friend, and then all the Gabayim followed suit. His wonder increased when he saw the Shamash bringing out the register of the congregants' names and then arranged to draw lots. It soon became clear to him that he was the cause of the activity. It was then explained to him that whenever a visitor came to town, everybody wanted to have the privilege of being his host. Therefore, in order to avoid any ill feeling, they decided that the fairest solution to the problem was to cast lots to decide who should be the host, where the visitor should have his meals, and in whose house he should sleep. As everybody in the town was so anxious to enjoy the honor of having a guest, it was the custom that when a member had already had the pleasure of acting as host to a guest, his name was not included in the casting of lots when the next visitor came along. In this way, it was felt that everyone would eventually get his turn. On this particular occasion, the lot was drawn by Shlomo the Butcher. He was absolutely overjoyed at his good fortune. His face shone with a radiance as if he had found some precious stone, and everybody, including the Rav, came up to him and greeted him with a hearty mazel tov, as if the occasion were a really festive one. All this made a tremendous impression upon Yosef Akiva, as it was, to say the least of it, most unusual. Generally, he observed in other towns that whenever a visitor came along, unless, of course, he were some distinguished personality, one would wait for the next person to invite the guest. Yosef Akiva, however, quickly told these hospitable people that while he, it was exceedingly kind of them to make him so welcome, he did not require anything of anyone as it was contrary to his principles to put anyone in the slightest trouble on his account. The butcher's face fell with disappointment. The Rav, too, looked very disappointed as he came forward and explained to Yosef Akiva that this was not a matter of troubling anyone, but a case of giving one the opportunity to do the mitzvah of hospitality. And whereas it was the duty of every Jew to seek and carry out this mitzvah, it was at the same time the duty of a guest to cooperate. It was a sort of joint mitzvah, as it required both host and guest to make it a reality. When the matter was put to him in this light, Yosef Akiva had no alternative but to accept the hospitality so warmly and sincerely offered him. And so he accompanied the butcher to his home, much to the latter's delight. When they arrived at the house, the guest was received with great respect. The table was prepared as if for royalty, set with all sorts of delicacies that might please the palate of the honored guest. Their disappointment was all the greater in consequence when Rabbi Yosef told them that he was sorry they had gone to such trouble as he never ate meat during the weekdays, and in any case, he was accustomed to eating very little. The whole Jewish community of Kershta was composed of 35 families, the majority on their livelihood, from the produce of their fields and the greens and vegetables of their gardens. There were also wool combers, weavers, tailors, and cobblers. All had some education, and a number of them were scholars. All without exception were God-fearing Jews. They availed themselves of every opportunity of davening with the congregation, and even during harvesting they arranged to meet to daven in a special corner of the field, which was fenced around, according to the din, where they met for prayer in the mornings and afternoons. Yosef Akiva stayed at the home of Shlomo for four days, which also included Shabbos. Meantime, it became known in Krushta that they were entertaining no ordinary person, but had a most distinguished guest in their midst. This matter of hospitality to visitors was no individual responsibility in Krushta. It was the care of the whole community, so that even in the case where the winning name was drawn by a poor man, he was given all expenses covering the cost of entertaining the guest in his home. It was therefore decided now to do all possible to persuade Yosef Akiva to remain permanently in Krushta. The Jewish community planned to find proper and comfortable accommodations for their worthy visitor. This was found at the home of the Chazn, Eliyahu Shmuel, who was given sufficient money to ensure that Yosef Akiva should have everything necessary to make him comfortable. During the ten days of repentance, the Rav invited Yosef Akiva to conduct a shir, 
and all the congregation was invited to attend. They were also favorably impressed with the vast scholarship of their guest that they asked him to establish a yeshiva in their town. The Rav, hearing that he was a widower, suggested to him that he marry his sister, who was a widow. Yosef Akiva agreed, and the wedding was arranged without delay. Four years later, they were blessed with a son, whom they named Moshe Leib, after the genius of Traki, in whose yeshiva in Smolevich Yosef Akiva had studied. This Moshe Leib was the same who later became the son-in-law of Eliezer Ruvain, the smith of Dabra Mizl. Five years later, Yosef Akiva became Rosh Yeshiva in Bashan Kovich. He was, by nature, a very quiet man, a lover of solitude. Whenever he finished his lectures, he invariably betook himself to a corner of the Besam Medrash, where he learned Torah quietly. He never joined the others at the table in their discussions, nor did he ever join them in their various celebrations. No one had ever seen him with a smile on his serious face, and certainly he had never been heard to laugh. When his son Meshulay became bar mitzvah, Yosef Akiva made no fuss about it, arranged no party. Meshulay delivered a speech his pupil in the yeshiva. His mother had brought some wine and cakes for those present, but his father did not partake of any of it. He asked the shamash to do the honors and see that the guest should have a drink and a bite.